meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Oh, I'm hey sorry. everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce <coughs> filling in for Dr. Drew. Dr. Bruce, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, emergency medicine specialist. And a uh, whiz with a tattoo, everybody. <laughs> get rid of your tats, make you look 20 years younger. Wrinkles, tattoos, we'll get rid of them. That's what, right. Whatever you got. Right. A man who has uh, no wrinkles. Stephen Baldwin is in here tonight from uh, Celebrity Mole, which is uh, on ABC Wednesday nights, 10 o'clock. Uh, Celebrity Mole, uh, Yucatan, which uh, I, don't know, I don't know where it is, but it looks great. Is it good? Well, last celebrity mole you did was Hawaii, right? Hold on a second, Drew. If you're listening, I already like this guy better than you. Oh man. Okay. I just want to start like that. And that and that's all it takes. This by the be way, my last show. It, <laughs> no, Drew. No, I don't. Yeah, Bruce please. Is in. He's got Drew Schmoo. It's like when you know. It's like when. It's like when uh, Howard got rid of that other guy. See, now he's just the other guy. That's it, right. I mean, we got rid of Jackie Martling. Oh yeah. 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 It's time for a change over here. Jackie it's, time, it's time for a turnover. Jeez. It's time for a facelift. You know what we want to do? We want to do with this show? We want to do the same thing. What was that? This kid, this kid calls in about six months ago, and I'm filling in. Where's Dr. Drew? <laughs> <laughs> ah! What we want to do with this show is the same thing you do to, to the ladies with the laser. Whoa. We want to give it a facelift. We want to give it a new look. It's got to be fresh. It was stale. Drew's been here for 20 years. The man's burnt out. We well, need some folks, fresh blood pumping yeah. in this show. Right. I agree. Yeah. Bruce may be uh, the new sheriff in town. Mm. Yeah. More, more of a Barney Fife, actually. I'll be the sheriff. Uh, you'd so be you're my, assuming my I'd, deputy. I'd work with you. L- listen, you, if I paid you a nickel, you'd come here six days a week and <laughs> cut my nuts while I was talking. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Please. now. He's a desperate man. Calm down. Sorry. Stephen Baldwin is here. Stephen uh, is here from the Celebrity Mole. <clears throat> now, now, last Celebrity Mole, there's a little uh, controversy with Stephen and Kathy Griffin. I don't know what you're oh. talking about. <laughs> this year. By now, the way, what can you do for her face? I've lasered sorry. her. <laughs> I've I'm lasered. sorry. You did? Yeah. You lasered Kathy Griffin's face? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not confidential because I think we did it on Loveline when they did it. You lasered? Uh, no. Did it help at all? She looked she, like Phyllis Diller before he got to her. So <laughs> I think break, she's attractive. You? She's a good-looking yeah. lady. And let me say this. A dear, dear friend. A dear <laughs> right. friend. A dear friend. <laughs> Bruce, stop coughing. <laughs> That's not me. Going. Now, this is... Uh, this is this uh, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, Sorry. Dennis Rodman Sorry. is on this show. Did he? Did he behave? Did you get along with him? How oh. many people did you know? Did you know uh, Amanda Lewis, or I mean Ananda Lewis, or uh, Angie Everhart, or Mark Curry, or any of these people? Um, I knew Corbin because we did the first Liberty Mall together. Oh, that's right, Corbin, yeah. which was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I knew Dennis just because you know I'd see him around at church. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't surprise me. Or actually, nightclubs that had been converted into nightclubs that were previously churches. <laughs> right. Like Limelight in New York. But anyway, um, I knew Ananda, of course, from her fabulous MTV days. Right. Uh, I didn't know Tracy Gold. She's an absolute doll. You got along with her? She's a doll. All right. One of the nicest people I've ever met in the industry. Now, how about Angie Everhart? Because, uh, you know, you know, I've met her. strong. That I've one. met her, seen her around, and I know people who know her. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Did you get along okay with her? She's a doll. Wow. All right, so no uh, no big riffs with any of the uh, other celebrities uh, this time around? Um, No, that, that, that Keisha, what's her name? What's that little Cosby kid? Ah, uh, yeah, Keisha Knight. Pull, Pulliam. Yeah. Bixby. Pull, pull you something. Him. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't get along with her too good? Well, it wasn't that I didn't get along with her. It's just that she didn't, you know, I didn't like how she played the game. She was boring. Mm-hmm. She's cute, but she was just boring. Now, how, how do you compare this to uh, last year's Celebrity Mall? Better? Worse? Different? Well, it was better for me because it was my second shot at, like, trying to do anything. Is it two hundred and fifty grand? Is that the, uh, you the grand You went 250 prize? large. They fly in. You, I got to tell you something. If they ever do this again. Yes. They fly in. They fly your family in, first class all the way, mm-hmm. a week or two, like a week and a half, two weeks. It, in, where you, in the Yucatan? We stayed at the lovely uh, Occidental Flamenco Hotel mm-hmm. uh, in in Cancun. 
Wow. Basically, the Yucatan is Cancun. Right. But we stayed at the Occidental Excaret Flamenco. I don't know what it is. It's a big resort, and it's fabulous, now, beautiful. Did you like it better than Hawaii? I liked it better than Hawaii. All right. Why? Just because, uh, uh, well, it was my second time, as I said. And it was a lot more fun because I'd kind of been through the ropes, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. And I, but, but, you know, unlike a lot of people in that situation who would have come back, like, you know, with all kinds of agendas about how to really try to win, right. <laughs> I didn't do that. I just came to have a blast, which is what I always do, and uh, brought my wife and kids and had a great time. All right. Well, good. Mazel tov mm -hmm. is... Uh, Praise the Lord. Drew's... Uh, actually, I'm not Jewish, but uh, Drew's half Jew, so he might say mazel tov. And uh, did uh, Kathy Griffin win last year? Yeah, the Your little... arch, arch nemesis. Well, no, she's not my arch nemesis. That's a lot of plastic surgery. 250 I just think, grand. I think she's just whacked. <laughs> yeah, she's a little nutty. <laughs> I goofed around with her. She wigged out. Like <laughs> she got issues. She's a psycho. Yeah. She's a dear, dear friend of the show, though. We can't say mm -hmm. uh, horrible things about her. Well, she's that thing that, that the stand-ups... See, you're a successful guy. You come from stand-up, but you've adjusted into society and reality well, Thank unlike you. most stand-up comics. Most of them are psychos who can never differentiate between art and life. Yeah. Well, you, like, you, you like, got to understand. You're that. talented enough to not have to use this exchange here like in your routine. Oh, I see. I see. See, that's what's a really sad reality about stand-up comics. Right. Well, I don't really have a routine. It's my sad reality. Well, you don't need one. But, well, thank you're, you. Because you're talented. Well, thank you, And you've, adv you've advanced successfully well beyond just your stand-up talents. Well, I'll tell you what goes on, I think. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Wow, out of the blocks. Just a little bit of ask us, and I like that. Of course. <laughs> Let me say this. I'm not stupid. Most comedians are, ne are neurotic. They, they absolutely are. That's what drove them to the business. That's where the sense of humor comes from. It's born of that pain they had as children and so on and so forth. Now, female comedians are super neurotic. So you're, you're dealing with a group there that's almost a breed of dog in that once in a while you find a calm Dalmatian, but not very often. And it's the same with the female stand-up comedians. They're, right. they're a little nutty. There's stuff in them. There's stuff inside of them. And it's but growing. unfortunately, what stand-up comics are doing is they're creating, uh, you know, a reputation for themselves like the pit bull, where eventually everyone's going to think that, like, they're going to turn and bite them. You know what right. I mean? Every time I meet a stand-up comic, I won't talk about anything meaningful or personal in my life. Yeah, because oftentimes they can't shut it off. It, and they're on all the time. And that's what I mean. Like, Paulie yeah. Shore. I love him. He's my buddy. We do Biodome together. Yeah. I see him, like, a year and a half later. You know, I talked, bumped into him a couple places, but I see him, and I, like, you know, we have a coffee, and he's like, hey, dude, so my Baldwin Brothers thing went over big in, uh, at Lake Havasu. I'm like, what? <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, I do a whole thing about you and all those stories you told me about your family. I'm like, oh, you know, wow. Okay. I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I just hung up that phone quick. Yeah, I tried to do some material on Bruce, but everyone was like, who, what? I was like, you know, Dr. Bruce, Dr. Spaz, and then they oh, all clapped. Lenny Bruce. They all clapped when, I, when I, I said like Dr. Spaz. It seems like there are two types of comedians, the ones that are insecure and their demons drive them, and then the ones that are very secure and genius-like, which Adam is, I hate to say it, but he oh. sees things, he's able to, you know, make those analogies. I just that are, like, I like, analogies are... All right, I'm blushing. Now. Anybody who forward. can just, you know, he's had tremendous success... Obviously, he's carved a little niche for himself. But more than that, I think the only reason that any of the Corolla thing works is he's weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he's who he is on the show, which is... But, that, but, but oh. you know, kudos. Oh, well, thank <coughs> you. Okay. He's taking, With a hammer in your belt. All right. Let's roll. He's taking the weird ball and just <laughs> run with it, hasn't he? Bruce, I'm the, same, the I'm the same off the air, am I not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, maybe, maybe more. Or you're a curmudgeon. Oh, come on, buddy. That's a that's a compliment, oh, Bruce. Come on, we're thick as Steve's. Uh -huh. I right, know. Be quiet. Let's move forward. Stephen Baldwin uh, in here tonight from uh, Celebrity Mole, which is uh, ABC Wednesday nights, ten o'clock. And let's talk to uh, Matthias. 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 Yeah. You're 18. What's up? Uh, my penis pops. Mm-hmm. It's got that, you can crack it, like you can crack your knuckle. 
Um, sort of. Yeah, it's just a weird popping thing. Not uh, okay. When it's hard or soft, it's got to be hard. Yeah, well, you know, hard. It's, established it's hard, and okay. you do it just like when a pianist before he plays the piano does that. You right, know, <clears throat> just like your mother the told you. No, you before you hop into bed, you give that <clears throat> snap. Right. Well, there. When it's hard, it's almost like there are ligaments that connect it, and when you're stretching those, sometimes you hear a popping sound. I mean, yeah. it's not something just like some people can pop their knuckles. And yeah, other people can. it can happen. I used to be able to do it. Right. There are there are penile fractures. You can have trauma when the penis is erect, and that's a that's a different story. You'll hear a popping, but uh, then you've ruptured the the sponge like tissue that uh, creates the the. Erection, so that's a totally different thing. Sounds like you're talking about re you're entertaining you're about people with this pop. Yeah. yeah, you have a girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Does she like it or does it freak um, her out? She's not quite sure what to um, do about it because um she was listening to Sex Talk with Sue, and she um Sue said that it breaks and it'll fall off and all sorts of horrible crap, <laughs> and so I wanted to make sure that my penis no. indeed stay intact. You just wanted to drop that name. Which, Who? I, that's my point. I don't know. Who? What, it must be another show. But uh, anyway. Uh, Who? There you go. All right. I'm just going to hang on. I just made this question yeah, up so right, we could try, drop talk. somebody's name in. But here's the whole thing, too. If you're going to drop in the name of another radio show or TV show or something like that, it's it's great advertisement for the show, except for when the three people go, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> then it's sort of bad advertisement for the show. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you got out of the gates poorly, Bruce, I must say, but uh, we're looking to rebound with Linda, who's 19. Linda? Uh, it's Brenda. It's Brenda. It's Brenda. That's, that's <laughs> Linda. You're right a little slow. The gates yourself. <laughs> Whatever. What, is the, what does the screen say, you're Bruce? So, uh, you're in charge here. Adam. What does the small. screen say, you jack off? How <laughs> dare you? Hi, so, Brenda. Current and past boyfriend. Now, what's the name? All the name. All right. Can't Go ahead, it. Brenda. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want the health question first, or the emotional question? Give us whatever, whatever's more entertaining. All right. Um, I don't know which is entertaining. The uh, bleeding during sex thing. Mm, I want to know what's the up other with one. That. I want I the other question. Do you want the other one? <laughs> okay. Well, that's um, an easy one. You, you need to have a pelvic exam. You might have some. Uh, you could have a lesion there that's causing it, or it could be uh, ectopic endometrial tissue that's uh, that's bleeding and it's relatively well normal, i had a pap smear since that happened you haven't and she's I, had well, one okay it happened once in december all right and uh, i've been uh, kind of on. sore for a couple of weeks but <laughs> yeah. having sex by every day and i think that it might just be overused kind some of some people some women just bleed when they have sex. right it can be normal the point is whenever you have vaginal bleeding you need to be reevaluated, even if you had a pelvic you know three six months ago because there could be uh, lesions there that are related to a sexually transmitted disease. Uh, you could have a growth that wasn't there that's there now. I mean, things change. So, you know, you can go into a differential diagnosis of all the different things it could be. You need to have a pelvic again. Have it well, I've had one since that happened. But then I didn't really ask about it because, I don't know, it was just kind of embarrassing. And then... Um, Does it continue to happen? Well, it got sore again, and I'm worried that it will happen. <sighs> Again. Go go to the goddamn gyno, would you? Yeah. So I in other words, already. you because I you did, open I with did. the world. All right, have to go and get out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, I swear, I, I swear. Like if I say to someone, "Let's go," let's give me give me a good question. I think they they drag their feet intentionally. You, okay. Well, all right. You need to be paid. You know that's why I'm. She went. She went to the gyno. She did like an idiot though. She didn't tell him about the bleeding. She just went and got a regular checkup. That and the person perhaps said everything's fine. Normal, so she, so and now it isn't bleeding. It's just there's a soreness. Listen, ladies, uh, it ain't a catcher's mitt. It uh, you use it enough, it it starts getting a little sore on you. Well, I, her emotional off. problem might be better, won't we? Uh, no, no, hmm. she screwed the pooch. Screw her. All right. I gave her a shot. Adam Carolla is God. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Come into a radio station near you. I want to talk to uh, Chris because I saw anal sex up there. Chris? Hello? Hello? Hey. I don't believe you already. Uh, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I didn't, I couldn't hear you guys. Okay. What's happening? <laughs> okay. I was just basically wondering if there, if, if there's any way you can get an STD from having anal sex. Impossible. Absolutely. The, really? Yeah. Any mucus. What do you mean, really? <laughs> you're, you're 19 years of age. You haven't. You haven't heard anything about getting a venereal disease via anal sex? Um, 
No, I haven't. You can get everything. Where are you right. from? He's uh, actually calling from Utah, so maybe. There you go. You are, got, you, yeah. are you a Mormon? I'm I'm not. You guys have AIDS over there? Um, No, we got a lot of Mormons. Okay. Are you a Mormon? No, I'm not. Okay, but, but listen, any anywhere you have skin, you're protected against, you know, if you drip blood on your skin, something that might be... Uh, a conduit for bacteria, but where you have mucous membranes, whether it's anal, vaginal, your urethra, your throat, I mean, uh, a lot of people say, well, I just had oral sex, and uh, 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 yeah. pharyngeal gonorrhea is very common, anal gonorrhea, you can get anything that you can get through normal sex, through anal sex. I, um, you get, I've seen you get, some huge... Uh, please tell uh, us. The uh, anal warts. You Have know, you seen the, some huge ones? The variety that uh, look like cauliflower. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. And on who? Uh, were you squatting on a mirror? <laughs> Where were you when you saw these uh, <laughs> said anal warts? Really? No, I, the last time I was a... Uh, Kathy Griffin? <laughs> that's what he used the laser on. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> took the laser right to the cauliflower. <laughs> you comedians, I guess, it's cutthroat <laughs> business, you could say. No, but seriously... Now, why does he think? Why are you concerned that you might have Bruce an anus? Like, uh, hey, Kathy, you're looking. Oh, that's your anus. Oh, oh no, Christ, no, bend over again. Uh, that's a good friend of the show. And now she's a it. dear friend. I've known her for many years. <laughs> but you know, listen, she dishes a little dirt. I can do a little dish in myself. Okay. All right. So the point is, uh, Kathy Griffin, dear dear friend, right. anal warts, cauliflower. What? Anal oh, warts, good God. or bad? Anal warts are bad. Bad. Cauliflower in the ass. They're different. Bad. <laughs> they're proud. There are dozens of different uh, strains of virus, different strains, and mm -hmm. the different, if you want to call them species, or think of it that right. way, the different strains cause different <laughs> shaped. Yeah, lesions. They, they look like enough. Flat. Some are very flat. You can't even you right. can't even see them. Others grow out. But this guy needs to get it, well, He's sore. Uh, I'm not sure. Chris. What yeah. Are you and uh, who's having anal sex? You and uh, a guy. You and a girl. No, it was me and a girl. Me and my ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Well, here's here's the whole thing. And, and, and I mean, stop me if I'm wrong, but anal is uh, the the best mode to spread any venereal disease, right? Because you you have the the tension, the extra tension, the extra mucus mucosal membranes and stuff down there, and then you have the uh, the wild card thing, which is the, God's wrath. I mean, God sort of punishing you a little bit for providing in this sort of unholy union. Do you not? There's probably more tissue trauma there. And any yeah. any time, again, right. the surface of the penis, that skin is, is more resistant to bacteria. But when you scrape it, yeah, you know, like bleeding if, if, is... I, if I could have sex with you and it was like that game <laughs> operation where my penis didn't touch the wall of anything and it just sort of went in and out, there'd be zero. Right. But if it, I was trying to squeeze it through a, a keyhole, there'd be a lot of trauma, right? right. And right. then the anus is... Uh, Certainly tighter than other uh, orifices in the body, depending yeah. on how much uh, well, exercise it's, it's received. But right, right. <clears throat> so, Stephen, not uh, anal uh, off the list for you now. Yes, absolutely. That's right. Not well, he's a fan not, of it he, myself. Anyway. I mean, it, he needs to look at it as any other kind of pen, you know, penetrating sex. He needs to use a condom, but he needs to get a value. What, what are your symptoms of? Uh, he Don't says talk he has to symptoms. Him. Just tell him to go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. All right. What are your symptoms, Chris? Are you a Mormon? <laughs> why the why in why in God's name are you asking me if I'm Mormon? That's Doctor True asking from uh, whatever ski lodge he's at right now. What are your symptoms? The symptoms basically are just uh, severe itching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's basically it. So I. What itches? It. Your penis itches? No, um, just like near my ball sack. Yeah. Well, that's somewhere around your penis, I mean, right? I mean, you know, it, you know, my balls always itch usually, you know, but not, uh, not as. Okay, well, there's no way to tell, but it's it's. No, a, what was it? Some sort of jack off night tonight? <laughs> some some sort of national oh, competition where yeah, so, yeah, it doesn't help. Baldwin doesn't uh, he doesn't attract uh, the. Uh, Curtis said he went crowd. balls to win. <laughs> balls to win. <laughs> He's hung up on the balls. No, that's a that's an excellent call, and if. If no, it's somebody's not listening an because call. no, because if someone's calling with a question like that, it means there are a lot of people out there that might have the same question or misunderstanding. Anal sex is very risky, and if and if this gal likes it, it means she's had it before a lot. And uh, obviously, is that what it means? Saying, <laughs> and also in that in that God's wrath type of way, yeah, for the kids out there that think that you know, especially the girls in in high school, et cetera, et cetera, that think they're still a virgin. 
Yeah, there's a handful but of they're them letting, out there. But they're letting the boys, like, go back door there? Yeah. Yeah. Read your Bible, kids. Yeah. That is, Virginity uh, is a spiritual reality as well. That's right. BJ's, back door, uh, nasal, ear penetration, it all counts. Yes? It's... Here's here's what Drew and I used to talk about that that look don't look at the hymen as uh, just the uh, thin uh, sheath of uh, skin that uh, go that's inside the vagina, but look at it as an imaginary plane, a barrier <laughs> over almost every opening. That once it's broken, the hymen is broken, meaning your mouth has a hymen. Mm-hmm. Your your ass has a what I like to call a bee hymen. Bee hymen that's right. uh, that's rear side. Uh, your your hand when you do this with it when you make it into that sort of senior wences uh, fist. <laughs> that's a hymen. You if you want to say you're, you're virgin, you have to keep all these all these hymens intact. These planes cannot be broken. Like the football goal line. That's right. That. You cannot uh, cross Adam, that plane. I, I, I'd like to suggest that you utilize this philosophy in regard to your mind as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. your mind should have a hymen, Adam. I, my, <laughs> that should never be broken. My uncle, I want you to pray about broke that. it in the basement of my father's house many when I was just a lad, and that's why I need therapy today. But I, Stephen agrees with me on my hymen plane breaking theory: the mouth, the hand, the ass. It's all you can't break the plane. I don't know what you're talking about. You are not a virgin if you get something in your coolie. Yeah, I'll take issue God with says. your God's wrath and God's aids. Whatever God, else you're talking yeah. about, ain't that's not a that's not oh, a see, biblical you're, you're, principle. You're a man of science, but I'm a man of God. You understand? And I understand. Now, here's what I think of. Uh, as long as uh, if we're going to get uh, semi serious about this, I do think that uh, nature doesn't let certain things go on. Like I do think that a there's a certain amount of the population that's going to be gay and a certain amount of population that's going to kill themselves and a certain amount of the population that's going to kill other people. And it's a sort of built-in way that nature keeps the populace uh, at bay, or at least an attempt to keep the populace at bay. And you can call it nature or God or whatever. And I do think stuff like AIDS, without uh, sounding like I'm, uh, you know, just some horrible uh, right-wing uh, Bible thumper, because I'm not, but I do think that at the point where you're opening up bathhouses and you're putting glory holes and stalls and you're having lines of 20 guys uh, line up to uh, bust a nut and then head back out for another daiquiri, eventually um, nature slides in and puts an end to it. And then that's basically what happened with AIDS, in my <coughs> humble right, opinion. You're just I am jealous too, yeah. Because I was like 21st in the line and got cut off right <laughs> Who at the said end. That? That's Engineer Anderson. Oh. Who's a lot like God, except if God had a, a tattoo on his left calf. He th- yeah, I threw the kumbaya on before. That's him. Yep. All right, now these are all uh, very heady topics that we'll uh, spend some time on, but we have to take a break. Stephen Baldwin is uh, here from uh, Celebrity Mole, NBC, Hello. Wednesday Hello. nights at 10 o'clock. Hello. Dr. Bruce. Filling in for Dr. Drew quite adequately. And uh, it's Adam Carolla sitting in for Adam Carolla. So we'll be right back after this. Hello, this is your radio. Radio. Love line will be right back. Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. That's Stephen Baldwin, who is uh, not filling in for ma- for anybody, and uh, and uh, rightfully so. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, atmosphere, uh, the band Atmosphere is going to be here tomorrow night. Hey, Stephen is making is? a personal call. <laughs> what city is the person you're talking to in? No, I'm talking to my buddy. Are you driving in your car, Jimmy? <laughs> You don't have to do driving in your car, by the way. You're going to say, are you driving? 106.7. People, uh, people know what you're talking Turn about. Turn on, dog, because I'm going to give a shout-out to you. Yeah. Now. Let's maintain the high I quality. Think you already gave him a shout-out. All right. Listen, I'm going to plug uh, Cabin Fever. 
Now, here's the deal. Sit on down, Stephen. Uh, we got to plug this uh, quick DVD uh, giveaway here, <coughs> which is uh, Cabin Fever, the uh, movie. Which I is, know uh, that movie. It's coming out tomorrow, I think. My on, uh, great DVD. buddy produced that movie. Oh, he did? Jeff Hoffman produced that movie. Fantabulous producer, this Hoffman. That's right. And uh, He's outstanding. He whipped up a little gem. Because he's a friend of mine. Say dear friend. It sounds better. Because he's a dear friend of mine. Cabin Fever is uh, his latest joint, as they say mm. in the business. And uh, the DVD is coming out tomorrow. If you call in and you're over 18, you get a DVD of Cabin Fever. And at the end of the week, we throw everyone's name in the hopper. And I don't even know if it's the end of the week, but at the end of something. And we pull out uh, a name, and that person is going to uh, Whistler, which is a, a big-time uh, ski resort over there in uh, Canada. And uh, you and uh, three of your friends, airfare, everything. Wow. Yeah. Great deal. It is a good deal. And <laughs> we've been long doing... As you don't, long as you don't sit up there in the first class and get cabin fever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then uh, you go... You know, uh, then you, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, then you go to a, a cabin in uh, Whistler and uh, ski. You get uh, airfare. You get uh, lift tickets. You get the whole thing. So uh, Gnarly. That's the big uh, cabin fever uh, giveaway. And the movie's got to be great because uh, the producer is a dear, dear friend of Stephen Baldwin. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, should I plug some of my stuff now? Yeah, go ahead. Well, let me plug. Uh, let me just plug uh, Celebrity Mole uh, Yucatan, which is uh, all right. Wednesday nights ABC. <laughs> well, guess who didn't win, everybody? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, you, what are you talking about? I know what's going on. I can. You tell. don't know nothing. You don't have the posture of a winner, Baldwin. I'm exhausted from whoring for the dang thing. Plus. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but I saw him pull up in a $18,000 car. That's not that's not the ride of a man who just won 250 He's lots. a humble man, Adam. <clears throat> oh, maybe it is. Humility. Tidings, too. Yeah. Probably uh, gave I'm not to allowed to buy a vehicle that's more expensive than $50,000 now. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because the Lord won't allow it, Adam. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but I thought the Lord's <laughs> ceiling was thirty grand. Well, it depends on how much favor he shows you. I see. I think he could do good for He's obviously uh, showed you a lot of favor. That's okay, right. Okay, Denali. He's been very okay, good. Okay, 350Z. Uh, the Denali was just uh, a land. I mean, that's not actually my vehicle. But uh, but go ahead. Give a plug. Because uh, what a lot of people don't know about uh, Stephen Baldwin is, is as much as he kids about the Lord, that's his new best friend. I mean, uh, you became born again how long ago? Two years. Two years. And why? Well, it's a predestined reality, Adam. Hmm. I mean, but you didn't bottom out or anything. I, I no, and I, I mean this with all due I'm 15 respect. Fifteen years sober. Oh, really? Yeah, because a lot of guys, you know, find it in the joint or find Jesus when they hit sobriety, or there, there's a point. Their wife leaves them. They, uh, you know, they squander all their savings on on crack. You know, there's me. A, it was an event. me. It was me. It was like a me and the wife thing. Mm -hmm. Like the wife kind of got into it before me. Right. And then it was nine eleven, dude. Oh, really? 9-11 just totally shattered me right? spiritually. Interesting. And, yeah. uh, and, and before that, how religious were you? How were, how were the Baldwins brought up? Were you guys going to church as children? We were a bunch of, of rabbits running around, you know, Irish Catholic. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, a lot of that mating process kind of continued on to... Uh, so you guys, you guys didn't go to church Sundays. Uh, well, we did, kids. but you know, you know, it's it's the church in this country is what it is. You know, I mean, you know, it's hard read, to argue just, with that statement. By yeah, the way, uh, bro, it's a very simple thing. Right. Read the Book of John. All right. I'll write and, that uh, down. Ironically, I'm not kidding. All right, Book of John. I'm writing this down. Ironically, I may be reading it on the John. That's not disrespectful, though. The is Lord it? doesn't care where you're sitting, son. All right. All right. Book of read John. Read the Book of John. Now, what right. is the book of John? It's uh, a letter that was written to the world True. by God. Yes. You, you read? Oh, by God. God through John. Have you read uh, the book of John? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wait, is that a separate book? No, John, no, 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 no. Bible? No. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, New Testament. New the Testament. New Testament. Yeah. New Testament. You know, right. John 3.16, you see it at the football game. We can yeah. Adam will relate. At Rainbow Head. The signs. No, the signs of the football stadium, you know. 
three God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? John three sixteen. So that's right. Bible, New Testament. But but Rainbow Head used to do that, oh. and then he killed somebody. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> not she, a good example. Okay. And by the way, who's going to step up and be the new Rainbow Head? The guy with the big uh, rainbow afro wig who's in the end zone of the uh, of the playoff games holding the 316 That's up. Rodman. Right. Is, that, is that Rodman? <laughs> All right. So read the book of John. That's what I should do. You should read the book of John. Okay. I'm going to do that. All right. You so should now, do that. Now uh, you consider yourself born again. No, right? I don't consider no. myself. You are. I'm, I'm absolutely. Well, that's the way I meant it. Hoot I mean, nanny. it doesn't offend you for somebody to call you a born again Christian. Ugh. Dude, it's like the greatest possible reality that exists. But it's 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 something that. Well, I, I want to get back to something, which is right. y- you said. You know, we were talking about like people and their behavior, and you're talking about these clubs and men and doing these terrible things. And you have to understand. Think about the whole time you've been alive. All right. Right. The whole time you've been alive, there's always been sick, crazy stuff. Right. Yes. Okay. Has it diminished at all? Not really. Has it about stayed the same and maybe even just only gotten worse? Uh, it probably gets worse, but our to- our tolerance level, we're right. able to accept right. more. Right, and it, Because right. we just start... St- so here's the deal. It's how a guy gets fat. Here's the deal. He doesn't put 100 pounds on on a weekend. He puts on 8 pounds a month over the course of 6 so years. So here's the deal. Yeah. Here's the deal. It's going to get really worse. Yeah, and then the tolerance, but but the worst part will get worse, mm-hmm. and the tolerance won't get as acceptable. Right, and that's when like more nine eleven things are going to happen. Like I don't mean terrorist attacks; I mean just horrible, terrible earthquakes and fires and things like that when in we, your lifetime. When can we? Oh, we can look forward to that in, soon. In your lifetime, oh, these Christ. things are going to happen. All right, all right, all right. So and, this happens. That's the apocalypse, right? Well, no. No. no, no, no. This is called the end times. The end times. Oh, yeah. okay. So see how he and I know and you don't? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Read the book of John. <laughs> Not funny, haha. Funny, weird, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like the fifth Baldwin over here. Dr. Praise Bruce. the Lord. Yeah. He's the Baldwin who never got I, laid. I, I you know just what? know what you're thinking. I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Here's the thing that's so cool that he knows and I know. Ready? The fellowship and the brethren that we share, me and this young man, mm. is closer than paternal brothers Ooh, yeah because how, how hardcore is that you don't because i know that uh communist atheist alec doesn't share any of these beliefs <laughs> oh <laughs> he's over there trying to save the uh, whales i don't know bang about, starlets i don't, I don't I, know about communist atheist but uh i'd say that's a yeah, bit of an exaggeration he, yeah, but, but go he, ahead he ain't thumping the bible that boy though he yo did you find my boy on vans he's out trying to save the rainforest did you mm-hmm. find it and uh, don't get me wrong, Alec, you know, dear, dear friend, just like uh, Kathy just Griffin. Just like Kathy Griffin. Yes. Mm. Ran into him at the airport uh, some years ago, by the way. Had an enjoyable Lex conversation. Lex Luther? The uh, Alec. Yeah, is that what you call him? I call him Lex Luther. He's, uh, <laughs> and by the way, uh, just a quick shout out to Alec. Uh, career really having a renaissance. Not that it ever went away, but uh, wow, just heating up with a lot of interesting uh, roles and movies over the last uh, year or so. Just won some big award in New York. Is that for the cooler? Yeah, it just won some huge award for the cooler. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. He's got a, he's got that... uh How's he doing with the Bourne? Big Mike... With the Bourne again stuff. That big Mike Myers movie just came out he was in? Oh, yeah, yeah, Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Yeah. Guy's on fire. Yeah. yeah, he's doing well. He's a talented kid. Yeah, and he's okay with the born again stuff. He crapped in the bed. <laughs> I think that may have been him. Yeah, from what movie is that? <laughs> that when, he in, when he was in here. Oh, he's in the other room. Oh, we, um, get, we get other bald ones on occasion. You own a ranch in Ojai? <laughs> <laughs> That's him. Anderson's that. you, heard, you know that voice, right? Do you own a ranch in Ojai? That, that was the voice you heard over your bunk right before he gave you a good ass whooping when you were 11, right? <laughs> Crap in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for born again, huh? For, uh, for no, gone. so the, no, the, the, the boys are, uh, the, the family's kind of like uh, mm-hmm. being very influenced, actually. Oh, really? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. And As you will too, Adam. Actually, there, there's Daniel and down there's the Billy, road, right? Now they uh, here's here's my point. I don't know uh, Daniel Baldwin, and I don't know Billy Baldwin. I do know Alec Baldwin, and my sense is is that you might win over Daniel, 
And uh, Billy, I don't think he'll totally win over, but he'll be polite and just say, yeah, I'm into God, too. Alec, that's not going to work. He's, uh, he's, too, he's too busy out there with, uh, with his uh, crazy uh, liberal uh, Hollywood friends out there uh, trying to take down the man. He ain't, uh, he ain't into God. He's yeah. not, no, he's not God's the hound of the... What are they he's into God, man. He's just he's he's uh, he's gonna take a little more time to come to yeah. Jesus, Adam. Yeah, you're gonna you have to show him the path to righteousness. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit will show him the path. Right. Right now, he's. I on, just have to be an example. Yeah, he's uh, getting hopped up on Zimas and chasing skirts right now. <laughs> you you you're gonna have to steer him back. On what? Zima. Hopped up, what's he likes that? Zima. That's his drink. He's some, sober some longer than I am. Oh, he is. You friggin' kook. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, so he's sober. Big deal. How long has he? How you been sober for? How long? Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and how long has Alec been sober? Like eighteen or nineteen right, years. We got to get him back on the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a little break. You're Steve, a sick man, Steve, Corolla. Stephen uh, Baldwin here. And what about the Daniel Baldwin and Billy Baldwin? Are they drinking? Are they sober? I know Daniel had a little, Daniel's a little sober. run in. Billy's yeah. Billy's the normal. Need yeah, I, I would call him the most normal of the Baldwin brothers. <laughs> or, or, slash boring. He's the he's the quietest right. of the All right, that's boring. Stephen Baldwin in here from uh, Celebrity Mole Yucatan Wednesday nights, ABC, ten o'clock. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Love line with Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew. We'll be right back. Line. I'm Adam. That's Hello. Dr. Bruce. Hello. Steve, the only Baldwin with uh, ADD. Yeah, I was going to say, tonight. I met somebody with worse ADHD It's got to be Greco. Me. It's got to be, the last name has to be Greco. Steven uh, Greco? No. The dude I was just telling you oh, about. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, dude, we just went to the Vans website, and I can't, like, I'm looking for gnarly photos of you, dog, and I can't find nothing. Jimmy right. Greco. Yeah. L listen, you think this is your personal interview? Yeah, maybe he'll show up. Your buddies are <laughs> you in invite him in. How dare you? I'm having a party over here at, K <laughs> <laughs> at Love Line, Christ. baby. Come on. All right, so, Greg, you're, yeah. you're, you're gnarly, dog. And I'm gonna Whatever. See you tonight. All right. Cabin fever, everybody. What? Well, now you that's what? Read that again. I don't do anything. I Why just... do you have to talk about cabin fever so much? Because it's a promotion that we're doing that I don't get paid for, ironically. Okay. But it's a promotion <laughs> that we're doing. Isn't we're... he a dork? Slip this in. the vest. Well, I thought you got paid when you did these things. All right. Anyway, the point is you get a DVD. If you call in tonight, you're over 18, you get a DVD. The movie has to be good because Stephen Baldwin's dear, 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 dear friend produced it. Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman. He's the best. You want to give a shout-out to Jeff Hoffman? No, I want to give a shout-out to Jimmy Greco. <laughs> All right. Dude, anyone who can hear my voice right now, Jimmy Greco rocks. Cabin <laughs> Fever is another Search thing Search for that him rocks. on your Ooh. internet because he's shredding for the van skate team, doggies. All right, but let me finish the plug yeah. here. He's probably Greco. He's probably going to like see me and just punch me in the head later. Why don't you get Let's his home phone so. out and maybe somebody can call him? Right, he's got to call don't, me. Don't. Don't don't keep it. Don't going. encourage him. How do I get him to call in? What do let I do? Me, let me finish this crappy plug before I kill myself. <laughs> cabin fever, and I don't get you. Don't get to go to heaven if you kill yourself. By the way, you want me to read that for you? Like what? Yeah, well, go ahead and read that in a hurry. Watch. This. I'll read it. No, I want to read it. All right, go All ahead. All right, you're the guest. Go ahead. No, and then well, you read it, and then I'll just do it better. Go ahead. Oh sure. Yeah, show him how Watch an actor this. does it. All callers who get on the air tonight will receive a cabin fever DVD and a chance to win a trip Cut! for. Dude, that was terrible, dude. <laughs> Stick to the latest. Uh, I just wanted to make you look good. Stick Steve. to the latest. All callers who get on the air tonight will receive a Cabin Fever DVD, mm -hmm. and will get a chance to win a trip for four to a ski vacation oh, in see. Whistler. That's a pro. The prize will include airfare, lift tickets, and a cabin. Mm -hmm. The Cabin Fever DVD will be available in stores on January 20th. That's the winner will be oh. announced next Sunday, mm -hmm. January 25th. You have to be over 18. Uh, so awesome. That's Steven, he's, that's <laughs> Baldwin. He's going to do the little Baldwin there. Steven, that was wonderful. I just want to get a wild, let's get a couple wild lines. Just give me three includes. I think we'll uh, we'll go ahead and paste that in. Go ahead. What do I do? Include. The word include got a little screwed up here. Just three wild oh. lines. Just give me Just give me include. Go okay, ahead. ready? Do it. Yeah. Includes. Mm -hmm. Includes. Mm-hmm. 
includes. Okay, great, buddy. You're wrapped. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> See, that's how it works. Yeah. That was pretty good. In Ojai. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear that again. Do you own a ranch in Ojai? Do you own a ranch in Ojai? Wow. wow. It's pretty good, huh? Yeah. The, the bald ones sound alike. Well, actually, uh, you and... Uh, you and Alec probably look alike uh, more so than uh, Billy and uh, Daniel. And if, if there's, is there a fifth one that I'm missing? <laughs> yeah, he's sitting right over here. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> the fifth one, the only Baldwin that never got laid. Baldwin. Oh, Bruce, Bruce Baldwin, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> My board certified addiction medicine specialist. Yeah, I'm he, here as a professional, so I have all can't the, lower after myself. All the Baldwins got done using Dad's van. They throw the keys to Bruce. Be like, clean it up before you bring it back. Yeah. yeah. I know where he's from on Long Island, Massapequa. I yeah, know what man. you're all about. Where are you from? Jericho. Hicksville. Uh, well, then I know what you're Oyster all about. Ooh. Yeah. Spaz City. Brian? Yes? You're 19? Uh, yes. It's great to be on the air with you tonight, Adam. It's great you to have you. All right. This is a uh, little something uh, we call Germany or Florida, Stephen. Uh. All bizarre stories either emanate from Germany or Florida. Brian will tell us... <laughs> The story will decide. Is it Germany or Florida? Uh, Go ahead, Brian. All right. Ready? That's your cue. Okay. An 11-year-old girl is accused of selling heroin on the street for her mother, sometimes dressed in her school uniform or nightgown, police said Tuesday. Investigators and prosecutors were deciding... Germany or what? Florida. Florida. Mm -hmm. It's Florida. Yeah. Uh, It smells like Florida to me, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've been wrong the last few nights. It's Florida. Florida. Steven says Florida. Bruce, Florida. Uh, I'm going to go Florida as well. Brian? say Florida? Yes. And you're right. South Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, he's pecking my... Steven, Steven, you're batting a thousand in Germany, Florida. Steven, are are you making another personal phone call? (laughs) What is going on? You understand this goddamn radio show? What about your faith? Who are you calling? Uh, oh, I'm dragging something off the thing here. I'm calling little Jimmy. All right, let's put the phone down. <clears throat> I will. Can, Hold on. Make, Stop yelling at me. Make your phone calls during the break. Maybe if I stun him with a laser, he'll like sit still. For All right, that's up. it. Good. Spencer, right, I'll you're 15? Right. Yeah, hey. What's happening? Uh, yeah, I was wondering. Um, I was uh, playing pool the other night with uh, my friends and... Uh, well, like, we got into a game, like, for money, it started out like, 5 or $10, and then by the end of the night, it was, like, up to 100 And uh, I ended about, I was down, like, $30 by the end of the night, but I just, I kept on uh, betting and betting until I was in lots of debt. And I was wondering if that was uh, maybe, like, compulsive gambling or something. Yeah. What about gambling addiction? Oh, I've been doing some little interesting research on gambling, and it, it clearly is an addictive behavior. And as with other addictive behaviors, loss of control is one of the prominent features. And it's certainly, uh, gambling in adolescence is becoming a real problem. Oh, and really? Yeah, especially with the internet access to to gambling sites, yeah. gambling on sports events. And the first thing I'd ask you, do you have a fa- you know, what's your family of origins like, and do you have a family history of addictions? Any alcoholics? Uh, well, yeah, my grandpa was an alcoholic. Okay. And what kind of a family did you grow up in? Was it fairly rigid or was it chaotic? Uh, n- Real structured? Not really. Or? Not really. <laughs> you couldn't have hung up the phone any more quietly than that. You had to <laughs> slam it down like some police I commissioner was who just Jimmy got and bad I got news. the last name right, dude. Jimmy Greco, doggies. Yes. He's right. his bookie. He rocks. <laughs> okay. Right, go ahead. Who cares? Thank you. <laughs> no, he so, rocks. This kid's sick. Go ahead. So, Spencer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, Stephen. I saw you in uh, in Half Baked the other day. I was watching that. You were the uh, the MacGyver stoner. What'd you think, dude? That was that was high quality, grade A performance. Now wait Thanks, a minute. Dude. You you can't do any more of these kind of movies now that you found uh, Jesus Christ. That's right? correct. You can't do it. These are these are sinful movies. Yes. Well, I uh, uh, I don't even try to figure out if they're sinful or whatever, it has nothing to do with that. I, I can't really associate myself with anything that it, that doesn't support my faith. Come right. So you don't want to do any, uh, you don't do any, like, uh, pot smoke and burnout movies? No. You can't play any junkies or gays or I, anything I, like that? You won't be seeing me in the sequel to The Usual Suspects, in other words. Well, but now what about that? The is something like The Usual Suspects. I mean, you you played a criminal, but it went, I don't believe your character was, uh, you know, I don't know. You weren't raping kids or anything. You were just like kind of a 
Well, Fuck, you know, th this you? is another, you know, this is another interesting topic about Hollywood and actors and people who are calling themselves Christians. You know, I go by the book, buddy. Mm -hmm. I go by the book. What is that? Is that a Bible? It's a Bible, son. Wow. It's the word of the Lord. I got. I got. It's the rule book, Adam. Let's do a you Bible. Read it. Let's do a Bible test. I I bet that you can flick to some random page of that Bible that Bruce could read it out loud in the microphone, and it would make sense. There would be something poignant. There'd be something that has to do with some of the calls we got tonight or the theme of the show. What do you think about that challenge? Hmm. Uh, I think it's brilliant. <clears throat> All right, flip it open. Let me f just flip it to a right now. No looking through it. Let's just. Uh, I'm just going to shout out a page. All right, a page. Wow. Yeah. I, no, no. This is going to be from the Holy Spirit. Go I ahead. go with that. Watch. I, I I can feel the holy the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, pushing through me. We got to take a break. I'm going to say page two twenty two. Old Testament. No problem. All right. We'll take a uh, quick break. Stephen Baldwin is here. When we come back, a very dramatic reading of the Bible. Page do I get to read it without him interrupting me again? Yes. Dude, yes, cut, you do. Cut. Deuterometry, bro. We'll, this is uh, going to be big. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Three, two. All right. Love, 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 love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Live on our front. Alternative. San Francisco. <laughs> That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Deuteronomy. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Deuteronomy. <laughs> and that's about as good a job as he's doing. He's doing a Deuteronomy kind of job. Stephen Baldwin is Yo. here. Stephen, who's uh, recently <sighs> found Jesus Christ. He's always known him, but he was, got reacquainted with him a few years back. Uh, I don't know about that. Recent, recently, a couple of years. A couple recently, of years. Jesus Christ found me. That's right. That's How the cool point. is that, dude? That's a good answer. Isn't that cool? Now, you didn't go find him. He found you. It's a predestined reality, Adam. Right. And the I point have a is, personal is, relationship with Jesus Christ. I do. And and Stephen is actually, uh, he walks the walk, not, and not only talks the talk, he packs a Bible with him. Yeah. yeah. Anybody that can hear my voice, go to a website called livinitthemovie.com. But it's living without the G, L-I-V-I-N-I-T, livinitthemovie.com, to check out a gnarly skate BMX DVD that I put together with all skateboarding Christian and BMX dudes that finally there's going to be a gnarly core sports movie out there with Christian dudes who are getting down for Jesus. Yeah. And it's not going to be that cheesy Christian you know what that is all this country has produced over the last hundred years. Well, you know, I, I this like, is I, the new wave, the new movement of Christianity in America. And when you say movement, you don't mean that in the number two kind of way. You mean it's more of a revolution, right? Well, you know, it depends on the eyes and the ears that you have to hear and see with there, Adam. Now, right. Now, I'm speaking I, spiritually, of course, I so your let, interpretation is something else. Let me ask you this. What about the muscle men for Jesus Christ? The guys who get out there, they take a phone book, they rip it in half, they take a baseball bat, they try to snap it over their head while the other ones are screaming uh, religious chants at them. You ever see those guys? No. You've never seen those guys? Yeah, those guys are on cable. It's You've like the Tammy Faye are... channel. I think it's the same vein. Of... It's huge, pumped up guys who, they're power lifters, and they're like lifting for Jesus. And the guy's like, blow up that hot water bottle, brother. All right, brother. And he starts blowing it, and his face starts turning red, and his bowels start pushing out <laughs> through his anus, and the other guy starts screaming at him, do it for JC! And everyone goes nuts, and then he blows up the hot water bottle, and then he starts pumping and screaming and bending rebar over his head. It's great. Right. I don't know what it has to do with religion exactly, but he's getting the kids pumped up. I, I do my own thing. Okay, you I'm, know, ju I'm just saying. I'm but just I don't saying. judge others. You know, what no, I mean? you don't judge. That's my thing. I don't. The judge. Lord is a great mystery, Adam. I don't judge. We'll never understand what He's doing or how He's doing it. Right. We won't. But but I'll tell you one thing. We uh, we might understand. We might we might get some clarity because before <clears throat> we went to break, I took a look at uh, Stephen's Bible and I I had a, a strong feeling. And once in a while, 
I'll even break into tongues. Shandala, shandala! <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, the uh, I worked with a guy named Frank who broke into tongues, but all he said was shandala, shandala. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, well, that's or temporal all I lobe say. seizure. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, Stephen brought a Bible. I said, turn to page 222 because <clears throat> I had a feeling. Deuteronomy. And then Dr. Bruce would read it, and somehow it would make sense. Do you understand that I, it, would, it would be germane to what we've spoken about tonight? Bro, this is unbelievable. Like, really? Okay, you ready? Now you got to shut your fat face. <laughs> I thought I was going to use the okay. Well, yeah. Okay, because let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Read, what you did, read from the Bible. What you did is now you're doing your Corolla thing right now, right? right? And yeah. the Lord is speaking to you. What does he say? Deuteronomy, okay? And this is out of the 28th chapter, the 27th verse on page 222. That was my page. The Lord will smite you with the boils of Egypt and the tumors and with the scab Ooh. and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. Wow. Let me say that last part again. From which you cannot be healed. The Lord will smite you with madness and with blindness, with bewilderment of heart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Are you kidding me? We we're talking about uh, anal sex and uh, festering <laughs> no, boils the, and no, stuff. No, no. Oh, no, no the kid no. called up about the itch. He did talk about the itch. Right. That's true. We talked about the cauliflower before. That's right. All right. Yeah, that's true. That's so right. then it jumps to the 45th verse. Which is, this is like, I like when the Lord just kind of throws it down, mm -hmm. like hardcore. Yeah. It says here, so all these curses shall come on you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you would not obey the Lord your God by keeping his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you. They shall become a sign and a wonder on you and your descendants Forever, uh, because well, I picked a heavy page. Because mm. you that did not fluff page. La, 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 Because you, I spoke in tongues. Because <laughs> because you did not serve. <laughs> because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a glad heart. What? For the abundance of all things, therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord who, whom the Lord will send against you. Mm. Uh -huh. All right. So I I picked a meaningful page. Right. Because there's, there's got to be five, six hundred pages there, right? Oh, yeah. And what were the odds? Look, what were the odds yeah. that you said page 222 right. will be a page that references what we've been talking about tonight and specifically the word itch, mm. which was in a conversation True. tonight, was in the paragraph, the first paragraph of page 222. Now, here's the problem. Yes. yes. Here's the problem, Adam. What is it? Preach, just preach. just like when 9-11 happened and everybody right. went, oh, isn't that terrible? Mm -hmm. What's for lunch? Right. Yeah? Yes. See, now you're going to walk away tonight and go, hmm, I guess that was a little weird. Or maybe not even like consider that at all as some interesting coincidence. What were the odds that you jokingly said, turn to page 222, because I think it's going to reference this conversation tonight. Right. And the word itch. All right, but here's what I'm saying. What if I turn to page uh, 114? Would hold, there hold on a sec, buddy. Out of thir over 1,300 pages in the book I'm holding. Holy mackerel. You picked the one that referenced the word itch. I have an itchy, itchy rash. <laughs> Is that a coincidence? No, I believe I'm Is a... Is that a coincidence? No, I'm a prophet. Is that what you're asking, looking for? <laughs> No? All yeah, well, I don't know. It probably is a coincidence. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the pages say. There may, there could have been a juicy morsel on every page. That's all I'm saying. You said, turn to page 222 because I have a feeling it's going to reference our conversation. Well, that's true. And you know what? And if it didn't reference it, you'd have been like, ha, 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 Yeah, all right. All right. But it very ridiculously specifically referenced the conversation. It was interesting that there's not it a lot used of... used a word that we used in our... Co itch! There's Next not caller! Of, not a lot of itchy <laughs> conversations going on in the Bible, I'd imagine. No? All right. All right. Good. All right. I'm a new man. Javier? Hey, what's up, man? You're uh, 24? Yeah. Uh, you read that eating peaches can raise your sperm count? Well, I read it in a men's health magazine. 
I mean, I read a, a while back, and I've always wondered that if that was true or not, and some nutritionists or doctors, whatever, said that it was. And I was like, okay. And what do you need to hire? First off, you're, uh, what are you, you're, you're Mexican? <laughs> yeah. Javier? Hispanic. Hispanic? Yeah. Wait, wait, you got plenty high sperm count. Yeah, you got you're very, very... Like- Feral people. 10 million well, sperm I mean, in yeah. ejaculate. Well, yeah, you got 10 million at each each hamper load. What well, do you want? Well, 14 no. million? Well, let me, good. Let, me tell you the, let me tell you the fact. Look, it's because I'm married and, um, you know, me and my wife are trying to have a, a child. But the thing is that if I've heard people have low sperm count and some have high sperm count. Do, do yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yes, it does vary. It, you're a 24-year-old guy. Yeah. You don't, do any, you don't do any drugs? No, I don't. All right. You're, you're fine. Yeah, it's you, like some people have a high IQ and some people have a low IQ, but the 99% of now IQs... Now you're insulting from, the man. No. Here's the point, no, Javier. He's, he's saying you have a low IQ. No, I'm I, not. I don't believe that. <laughs> I refuse uh-huh. to believe that. Uh-oh, now with that goofy laugh, I think maybe you do. But here's <laughs> the point. Here's the point. You will get your wife pregnant plenty soon. I don't know how long have you been, tr- how long have you been trying. Uh, about four months, maybe. Okay. And you know when to do it, right? Well, of course. All right. And uh, no, not in the back door either, right? <laughs> of course. All right, there, buddy. Uh, You'll be done. fine. Look, you try for what a year, and if it doesn't happen, doesn't you go in and talk, see a fertility doctor? Uh huh. Bruce, I'm talking to you. Yeah, a year. He's 24. It, He's fine. Yeah, there's some, some foods are. I don't know what the correlation is, but what did he mention? Peaches, pears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. I just eat a healthy diet, and uh, your body is fully capable of producing very healthy sperm without any kind of nutritional supplement. That's right. I mean, listen, your body, you can eat, like, uh, bark and uh, berries and roaches and crap. And well, on our, yeah, today, sperm, right? there's very, yeah, there are very few people who have significant nutritional deficiencies. Is our sperm count getting lower, though? I've always heard that. Is that heading down? Is who's... Uh, our, I don't mean me. me no, I know. What's me, sorry, your our society? Sperm, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. That, that was too confusing. The phrasing of the question. No, it's our personal sperm. <laughs> no, I'm saying I've never heard Last anything. Last time I to counted, tallied up our sperm. I heard it was. I heard as a society, it was sort of edging down. No, not aware of that. Not aware. Is that of that. A, did Drew? Say Drew that? didn't say anything. I oh, okay. you just you, you hear studies. You talk about you know societal pollutants, environmental stuff, ball uh, nuggers, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, sitting too close to the TV. Though. Stephen, you got kids, right? Yes, sir. You're done with your sperm. You don't need it anymore. No, I'm going again. Oh, yeah, are you? Oh, yeah. How many kids do you have? Two daughters. Two daughters. You want a son? It doesn't matter. Whatever the Lord brings me, Adam. Oh, that's what. That's the attitude I need. I was just talking oh, to somebody oh, about... I'm sorry, would you, would you say that again, please? That's just the attitude I need. I was just talking to someone at work about spinning the sperm to get a boy and doing all that right, stuff. Right, 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 right. In how's vitro. That, how's that work, bros? Can you spin them? Can you get a boy sperm? Sperm separation, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Sperm separation. How's that work? Beat off into a colander. How does that work? <laughs> I am, I'm going to try it anyway. You, you, yeah, I don't. I don't. Into know a centrifuge. Works, centrifuge. Sorry. You spin it around. Listen, you got you got Stephen Baldwin over here. The guy was in Biodome. He's telling you what how, how, he knows more about doctoring than you do. He knows more about centrifuging sperm. Centrifuge. No kidding. What's up with you? Come on, Bruce. I only look stupid. No, I know. I, I, you're twice as smart as Bruce over here. Claims to be a doctor. Bruce rocks. Well, he uh, looks at me cross-eyed. Drew? Don't ever come back no. here again. You're not welcome. You're not welcome here anymore. Me? I'm, no, Br- Drew. Drew. Drew's not oh, welcome. Drew's out. Drew's the and man. J- Drew's change the, man. the locks on the doors. I'm serious. And and uh, if he has a parking space, which I know he doesn't have, but <laughs> if he had one, let's cross his name out. And Drew is Dr. evil. How He's dare evil. You. And you know why? I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> Drew is uh, half Jew and uh, <laughs> half... Uh, Half, half Drew. Half Drew. No, he's half <laughs> Jew and half Drew. Yeah, that's what he is. He's pagan is what he is. No, he and I have the same... He's pagan. My father's Jewish, my mother's... He, he doesn't, same but he Jewish. didn't embrace the Lord like you did. That's right. He 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 followed. He 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 went the way, uh, the, uh, he went the path. Uh, the secular led, path. But why don't you got no play, playa? <laughs> and look at him. He thinks he's black. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go. He's 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 He has no spirituality whatsoever. I oh, he's to, very spiritual. I try to spread the... I Is to, he? No, he's not. He's spiritual from... No. A medical standpoint. Right. No, he's a man of science. Yes, well, you know, girl. He's a man of the world. <laughs> Marilyn. Yes. You're 18? Yes. What's up? 
Um, I've had a problem with depression for like four years. You got to start reading that Bible, baby doll. That's right. And I, I have to take medication, but when I take it, I have no sex drive. What are you taking? I'm taking Wellbutrin and Paxil. Mm. Mm-hmm. Why both? Well, there are two different types of antidepressants. You have a, the Paxil serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And no, Wellbutrin's Wellbutrin. for ADD. Well, Wellbutrin's an atypical antidepressant. It's not the usual type of antidepressant. It's the only drug in the class that it's in, and it, it uh, inhibits epinephrine reuptake. It's more epinephrine and dopamine. So it doesn't generally affect sex drive. And if physicians are treating somebody with depression and they're on an SSRI like Prozac or Zoloft or one of those things, then I've been on that before. Excuse me? I've been on that before. Right. So what I'm saying, though, is if you could be on Wellbutrin alone as an antidepressant, you wouldn't have the problems with the sex drive. It's one of those that's recommended for people that really complain a lot about the sexual side effects of the SSRIs. And those... Uh And it affects sex drive and also... What's the other one you're on, Wellbutrin and what? Paxil. Yeah, Paxil's whack. Have you taken that? Yeah. No, but I, I have friends that, you know. Mm-hmm. Have they tried you on Wellbutrin alone without yeah. the Paxil? Yeah. And what happened? You, it just didn't work, wasn't it enough? No. All right. So uh, how about... Uh, what's Viagra do for women these days? Anything? <laughs> I, I hear about that. I said, tell women to take some Viagra. Yeah, give, me another, for, give me another page, Drew. All right. It's time to get back to the Wait, Bible. Drew, I'm Adam. Adam. Okay. Have you taught, just recommendation, I would go back to your psychiatrist and talk to him about the problem, and maybe he could try you on a different, uh, a different antidepressant. Some have less sexual side effects than others. And Have you discussed it with him? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Listen, she, she I would start yelling problem. at you if you weren't clinically depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am. No, it's a serious problem, and it's a, a huge quality of life issue with no, somebody that's already I know. Has a depression. Okay. Problem. What about this? What about this? I know. I know. Stephen's going to give me a hallelujah, but it's like it, it, hallelujah. Well, let me finish. I'm finishing. Okay, but it's coming. I'll cue you for the hallelujah here. What is wrong with discipline? I mean, what is wrong with somebody who's depressed, who's young? There's, there's millions of 18 and 19-year-olds who are depressed. What's wrong with setting your alarm clock for uh, 6.45 tomorrow morning? When it goes off, no matter how badly you don't want to get out of bed, you get out of bed and you jog three miles, you come home, you do 30 push-ups, and you eat some granola, and you listen to a little classical music, and you punch yourself out of it a little bit. I mean, you overcome. Uh, uh, give me hallelujah now. Hallelujah! Oh, because you're... And because I know major, you're going to say, well, it's going to be impossible because when that alarm goes off, the person is the person is depressed. I mean, I've been depressed in my life, and I know what it's like. It's it's, it's like your your everything, your whole body's been all the guts have been taken out of you, and sand has been put back in your body, and it's hard to do. But but yet you can push. But clinical depression, you're describing an an adjustment to sort of a situational depression, and it's it's physiologically different. An individual that has vegetative signs, which are uh, problems with loss of appetite, loss of energy. Some people are so profoundly weak that right. they physically... It's not a matter of will, mind over matter. No, I understand that. And I've, ha- I've had that. No, you haven't had that. Well, how it's, dare you? But, uh, yes, I, my, my family has a lot... Of, I come from hallelujah. a lot of depression. Not yet, I'll kill you, though. Uh, I come from a lot of depression, and I've had many years where it was almost... Uh, life was sort of devastating, and everything was but wet But you with spiritually red. changed and were able to overcome that because you made money. Hallelujah! Yeah, it's like I give one now. <laughs> it's like you one saying myself. to me, "Hey, no, I've no, been what, short of breath." Here's what I did. I've no, had... shut up. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying I hated my job. My girlfriend dumped me. I was in the worst. I, I was. I was almost paralyzed. I mean, my back hurt, neck hurt, whatever. But I had to go to work. I had to. Otherwise, I was going to be in the street. Like I would get up and sit on the end of bed. I almost want to cry and just drag my crappy ass from my crappy car to some crappy job and I would feel all day like I wanted to take a nap but it's like I I sort of was able to push through it now I'm not saying that I was horribly clinically depressed but neither is everyone who's calling this show no but she probably is she She's might be but there's also a lot of people that are on the cusp you know who may not be Debil- debilitated right, exactly. by it, who really need to sort of kickstart themselves a little. And I don't want to just sound like some p- 
Pollyanna-ish gym coach, but there's a part of you that's going to have to you're discipline yeah, yourself. You're absolutely right. You, you don't feel like doing it. You must do it. You have right. to get up. You have to go to work. It sure sound work. like a gym coach to me, buddy. That's right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And what's well, that? My problem is, even when I'm on the medication, I've attempted suicide before, and I was hospitalized for it twice in, like, one month. So no matter what I do, it, like, keeps getting worse and worse over the years. No matter what medication I take, I've had two All right, were, were you abused? Were you abused? When I was younger. Yeah, well, that's... Do you have a family history of depression and or suicide attempts or completions? Yes. Okay, so right. you have the genetics, you've had a chaotic family, and you're a, you're a setup for this, and you probably have the real clinical depression with vegetative signs where you have it affects your appetite, your sleep, your energy. Right, level. Listen, we need you need to talk to your uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, by the way, and get your stuff adjusted and stick. And by the way, 18's a crappy age. Things get better, things get easier if you stick with it. Don't kill well, yourself. Well, and there are other antidepressants that have less sexual side effects, but you need to get into that with your psychiatrist. And, but and listen, if, you, if you're thinking about killing yourself, um, the sexual side effect is not really the problem of essence right now. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna ask our guest, uh, Stephen Baldwin of uh, Celebrity Molly on uh, Wednesday nights at uh, 10 o'clock. Sw <coughs> go to page 1136. I bet there's something poignant that can be steered toward a young, depressed Marilyn here. I bet we can, we can touch her life in some way if you just open the Bible and turn to uh, page 1136. Bruce probably memorized it. Uh, uh, let me. <laughs> yeah, was that old? Is that new? Where Revelation. I think you're in Revelation. You're in Revelation. <laughs> wow, Bruce. Uh, I whatever information that uh, or young, maybe you're in young John. Stephen we're talking about John. Where are gonna, we? Gonna, Where's eleven thirty six there, Stephen? Yeah, it's John. <coughs> you're um, you're you're. I'm good, right? Right. There could be something here, some information that uh, Stephen is going to impart to young Marilyn that's going to help her with her depression. Okay, here's the words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ready? I'm ready. It says on page eleven thirty six. It's John three, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. We said John 3.16 before is what he said. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. This now is... Now I'm impressed. This is John... You just said page 11.36. That's now right. in every different Bible, 3.16 is going to be on a various different page based on the translation, right? Uh-huh. What are the odds that you would call that number? And it's John 3.16, which we talked to earlier today. 70%. <laughs> Less than One in 65. a million. That's what? bizarre. Oh, look at that. Woo. Oh, wow. Wow. John 3, Corolla 0. He's still, he's still not speechless, folks. Wow. All right. Whatever. Wow, we got Dude, John look at me, look at me, look at me. Are you kidding me right now? Well, that's amazing. Is that great? <clears throat> so it says here at yeah. the top of uh, page 1136, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, mm -hmm. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Wow. All right, so th that message is uh, telling Marilyn to uh, become a born-again Christian. Yeah. Right. It's telling her to become a born-again Christian. That is. If she, if she accepts Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. and she becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit, the healing power of God could come upon her. her. Her depression could completely go away, and she would may never need any drugs again. Marilyn, how about it? No, I'm atheist. Yeah, well, that's yeah. You're atheist, right? You're you're living in your folks' basement, and you're thinking about suicide. Where's that got you? How about what? finding Jesus Christ? Marilyn, you want to have some fun? No. No. <laughs> just, just, she's, what'd she say, no? I, well, Marilyn. No, hold on, on a second. I want to talk to her for a second. Talk. Marilyn, did you say no? No, I said how. Okay, well, I'm, I'm about to tell you. You ready? Yeah. Later on tonight. You listening? Yes. Later on tonight. Because in the Bible it says that the only way to have true faith and belief in God is in order, to, you have to do it blindly. You have mm -hmm. to like almost act as if it's true whether you believe it or not. That's what it says in the Bible. So you, okay. you want to have some fun? Yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth right now. Are you ready? Yes. 
Here comes the truth. I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but this is the truth. You ready? Yep. Later on when you're alone and you're by yourself, if you just, even if you don't believe it, if you just say, Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, Anderson, please. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Are you ready? Yep. I'm ready. If you just ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to come into your heart and you say, forgive me of my sins and I want you to take over my life and I want you to come in my heart and you're asking for the love of Jesus to come into your heart and your soul, you know what's going to happen? I've done that. What I've, happened? I've, nothing. I you accepted like Jesus Christ? Times. You accepted Jesus Christ? Yes, I did. How long ago? Uh, like, I've been doing it for a few years because I've had clinical depression I don't trust for four what years. What did he look like? What was he wearing? <laughs> he's, he's, Sandals? He's what? being silly. When, oh. when did you do that? I did it just like one month ago, and then I do it pretty often, but then I became atheist because I was like, you know, this isn't real. This is really stupid. Let me ask you a question. Do you, but when you do it, do you, use the, 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 do you use the word God or do you use Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. You do? Yeah. All right, and then do you follow it up at all by reading the Word or reading the Bible or going to any church at all? Yeah, I have the Bible in my room. And how often do you read it? Uh, every night. What? Every night? Yeah. Hey, do you go to well, church what's your on favorite, Sundays? What's your favorite book? I don't know. But you read it every night, so you got to be remembering what you're reading, right? Pretty much. Okay, well, you know what? God's well, speaking to you tonight, Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn, I went to uh, page uh, 1136, and it spoke to you. Now read your Bible again, please. Take those meds, talk to your shrink. we got to take a break. <laughs> hey, listen, Stephen Baldwin. Uh, yeah, Stephen's doing, doing a little storefront preaching here Absolutely. from uh, from the Loveline studio. So, Adam, what about you tonight, brother? What are the odds? Uh, 222 and 1136. I'm, what are the odds, Adam? I think Jesus is speaking to Adam Carolla tonight more than Marilyn. It'd be nice. Yeah. You're going to hear about a, after the show, a glass of wine, good porno, and a little masturbation. Oh, how dare... <laughs> What'd you say, glass of wine? <laughs> oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh... Yeah, that's, that's to me, that's the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Oh. Uh. Uh, Booze, the sperm, and the porn. All right, let's uh, let's uh, that's a holy trilogy for me. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take ourselves a little break. Stephen Baldwin here from uh, Celebrity Mall, and we'll be right back. One eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Love line is brought to you by YJ Stinger. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Praise be. Filling in for Dr. Drew and doing a wonderful job. Stephen Baldwin in tonight. Hallelujah. Filling in for Jimmy Swaggart and doing a <laughs> wonderful job. Praise the Lord. Stephen can be found on uh, Celebrity Mole. That is uh, ABC Wednesday nights at <laughs> uh, 10 o'clock. Corbin Burnson is uh, there. Hey, uh, anybody yeah. that can, yeah. anybody that can hear the sound of my voice right now should check out a website called livinitthemovie.com. L-I-V-I-N-I-T, themovie.com. And if you really want to get down, you can also go to a thing called longbeachdistribution.com because that's some other stuff I'm doing with some skaters called King of Kings Clothing and uh, Reliance Skateboards. It's gnarly. Check it out. And then if you really, really, really want to get down, yeah. you can check out uh, LegitSkateCo.com. LegitSkateCo. When did you get in all the skating stuff? Dot com. Dude, I told you, I made this movie, like a documentary about skateboarding evangelists that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I became a born-again Christian two years ago, and uh, like I, I went out and looked around about what was really cool in the marketplace, like movies, music, and all this kind of stuff, and tell mm -hmm. there's nothing. There was nothing that was hip and now and cool and today that was Christian. Right. And I thought that sucked. So it's like, are these guys going like, I'm going to do this fakey on this half pipe for Jesus Christ? Yes. Really? Yeah. And But dog, they are getting, these are gnarly radical skateboarders. Wow. Who, 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 don't, who don't have to live of the world and all that represents. Mm -hmm. They can be filled with the Holy Spirit, living for God, not be afraid, and still like have a tattoo or a piercing How or whatever. How old are most of these guys? They're all ages. I mean, some of them, I mean, Bruce Chrisman 
is the gold medalist from the 2001 X Games in BMX. Right. He's a hardcore born again Christian. Really? Loves the Lord with all his heart. Did you see that uh, Dogtown movie, NC by Boys, the way? Yeah. That was a great uh, documentary about Brilliant. the old uh, Dogtown, Venice, all the stuff for the whole skateboarding uh, movement or sort of modern skateboarding movement. Living at the movie.com, longbeachdistribution.com, and legitskateco.com, people. David. Hey. You're 21? Yep. You uh, heard uh, of uh, Bruce. You had a question for Bruce about the uh, UV uh, tattoo removals? Yeah, I heard from a friend that you can get a, a UV tattoo that you can't see, obviously, in the normal light. But if you go under a black light, it's, I don't know, it's there. It's, well, the, ma it's the mark of the beast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I've, well, he I've heard of those, but I've never had a request to remove one for probably obvious reasons. Unless you're walking around under black lights, you don't have a tattoo. Yeah, right. they just well, use that kind of the same ink this, they use. You know, there's the, one of the problems with tattoo ink is there's no standardization. There's no one has the the responsibility to report exactly what's in it. So the FDA doesn't control the production or distribution or yeah. sales of it. So why, why doesn't it? By the way, I mean, if you think of uh, how involved they are in almost every facet of our lives, I mean, I'm sure they check more into dog food than they do into tattooers ink. Why? Uh, why not? Why well, is that regulated? Probably there haven't been many complaints. It started out that it was illegal to get tattoos. Up until, I don't know, seven, ten years ago, it was illegal in New York. It's illegal really? now. In Oklahoma, right now, as far as I know, it's illegal to get a tattoo. Wow. Wow. wow so, I didn't know about that. Uh, I think it's one of these things, state by state, it slipped through the cracks. It's being mm -hmm. done. One of the concerns was uh, needles that aren't clean. And then when they got the state health sometimes is much more stringent than the feds would be. Right. I know in Nevada, they're much more after them uh, for cleanliness and, oh, really? and other issues. Hmm. But um, then when they got after them for the needles, then they found out they were having multi-use of a vial of ink, so there was some, you know, contaminated, contamination. perhaps. But right now, you know, from what I've seen, the shops, uh, you know, the, the guys, El Toro Ink House and Tattoo Mania in Hollywood and yeah. Outer Limits, the guys that I've I've dealt with, very clean shops, I mean, meticulously All right, but kept no, instruments. No new and, invisible tattoos? Oh, yeah. Yeah, certainly. There's always talk about, oh, you know, now inks have acrylics in them. That was the other concern. And I was told, I was at a tattoo convention trying to learn more about what's actually in the inks. Talking You're trying to get laid. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. No, really. You nailed some, the jigsaw puzzle chick. Uh, no, I did some gorgeous women yeah. walking around with me. Right. But acrylic, the concern was, are you going to laser uh, plastic that's in the skin as a result of the ink? I had one guy that put test. Remember the testers' paints and the yeah. models. He'd yeah. done that in, nine, in the nine, late '60s, and he wanted me to. So I ended up lasering. It was very Plastic interesting. Stuff. Yeah, uh, Doctor uh, Bruce is going to do a little uh, laser blasting on uh, Stevens' tats. A couple of yeah, them. yeah. Get rid of those. Now, how long do you think it'll take to get rid of? How many ses sessions before uh, Stevens are gone? I'd say ten month apart. Ten a month apart, and he won't be able to tell you ever had a tattoo. Really? And yeah. he's doing it free. How cool is that? First one's Praise free. the Lord. First, well, first they're so small. Free. They're very small, actually. So first session free. It's he's like uh, he's he's like a heroin dealer. He well, gives, gives the school kids the first hit free. Let them chase a dragon, <laughs> get hooked, and then they keep coming back. Like Drew, Drew likes the way it feels on his face for the. Oh, he that's does. different though. Yeah, he doesn't have any tattoos. No, I'll have to write a script and have you read the script or something. Isn't that what they all do? Oh. Sure. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Sandra over here, who's uh, 22 years of age. Sandra? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you guys something. You ever handling a pen or a piece of paper or something, and you're just not paying attention, and all of a sudden you realize you got a little snoogie on your finger, and you start balling it up a little, and then you go, wait a minute, whose snoogie is this? That's not my <laughs> snoogie. Who put this snoogie here? Well, wait, maybe it's my snoogie. I don't know. Maybe someone else has put it on this pen. I just got a little Snooky thing going on, and I was thinking, Snooky could have shot out of my nose, but this could have been uh, up Jed the Fish's nose four hours ago, for Absolutely. all I know. You, you don't know. All right, now and I got the Snooky thing going now. Uh, right, get, go away, ahead. get away from Stay me, away dude. from us. Go ahead, Sandra. Okay. Um, <laughs> a little last tangential. Last year, I happened to go to a motel with my boyfriend. You know, just spend a couple days there, the weekend there, or whatever. And I went into a hot tub, and I got a yeast infection. And this whole time through, I haven't had any health insurance. So I haven't been able to get treated. 
Mm-hmm. And so I tried training myself with, like, Monistat. I tried, like, the one dose and then the seven-day dose and three-day dose until I could actually save up the money to go to the doctor and get the, you know, pelvic and everything like that. Um, and then I got treated, and then, you know, the discharge turned clear. But then a couple of days after I was done with it, me and my boyfriend didn't do anything sexually at all, and it turned colored again. But ever since, I haven't really had any symptoms besides color discharge. And I would assume it's still, you know, a yeast infection and everything. And if it actually is, I was just wondering what can happen, you know, to your system down there with the uterus and everything. No, there's no long-term complications. I mean, the problem is, uh, could there be something else causing it? For instance, di- sometimes the first diagnosis of diabetes is made after somebody has recurrent yeast infections. Is it uh, so? Could, is it does a yeast infection in and of itself cause any damage? No, there, no. And the yeast organism is all over the place, so it has usually more to do with you know uh, wearing different type nylons or a pH change down there or something else systemically going on in your body. What so should she do if she doesn't well, have insurance? Well, go to Planned Parenthood, get another pelvic. I mean, you can get a free pelvic somewhere. You just need to have it looked at. Make, uh, there's really, you need to have uh, a doctor examine you or a nurse at least and find out if there's some, something else. You're describing colors and the way the discharge looks and things like this. It, you know, it, it needs to be looked at under a slide. You need to have some cultures done. Same you need an exam. I mean, there's no way over right. the radio that we can. Yeah, much as we'd like to look at your vagina over the radio. <laughs> We don't have the technology to afford that just yet. Right. But I mean, you're not willing. A, it's on the way. Yeah, you're diagnosing yourself as having a recurrent yeast infection and asking me if there's any long-term consequences when we really don't know that's what's going on. So. All right. Hey, Sandra. Mm-hmm. You don't have insurance, right? No. Okay. So uh, go to Planned Parenthood. Okay. And uh, throw your uh, vulva on the mercy of those good people over there. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. All right, baby doll. Uh, well, uh going to take a break. Uh, Stephen is uh, going to wrap out and uh, not be with us the last uh, break. He's got some of the Lord's work to do. That's uh, Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that, brother. Praise the Lord. You're catching on, dude. Going to a meeting, going to do a little noshing. I'm going to pray for you, too, Adam. Will you? I am, dude. Thanks. I am, because you're obviously such a retard <laughs> that if you can't see the Lord speaking to you... Talked about itch, you say 222, it says itch. That's true. Talk about John 316, you say 1136, and it's John 316. That is true. That's two of the most ridiculous coincidences I ever heard in my life. Well, maybe I'll get hit by lightning or something on the way home. Well, you know what I've always said to Adam is it, he doesn't like a lot of Christians he's known because a lot of them have been inconsistent. They don't walk their talk. Right. But, but I think knowing you would be a good thing because you're, you seem to be very consistent with what you believe. And I've also said to Adam, if you knew Christ, you'd probably like Christianity. But it's the some of the representatives uh, aren't always the best uh, examples of what it's all about. Unfortunately, well, right. I think that I think that after tonight, <laughs> some incredibly <laughs> supernatural things are going to start to happen around him. Bruce, what what do you think Christ would say about the seventeen sugars you put in your coffee <laughs> and then the five <laughs> packets of sweet and low? Unacceptable. <laughs> You think he would do that? If, He'd forgive if, him. If Christ pulled up a uh, cup I'll tell of you Joe what. down I'll here. Tell you what. You know, he what? Sounds like I'll tell you what. You're asking a very, very valid question. I am. What would Christ think of all the sugar Bruce puts in his coffee? That's right. I don't know. When Christ thought about the sin of the world, mm-hmm. he allowed himself to be crucified in order to accept it. Right. But he, he turned the water into wine, not the coffee into ice cream. You know what you Christ would say? Jackass? He'd say, people... Obviously, you're judging me because they think I had wine, and that's uh, that's an issue. So that's right. he would say it's not what you put yep. in your body. Yes, it's the belief, it's the, your faith that right. makes you whole and the same. Right. Listen, soul. come on, read the whole praise temple, the Lord the whole temple part. All right, praise the Lord, Stephen Baldwin. You uh, go. You're God catching bless on. you and Godspeed. Uh, Celebrity Mole Wednesday nights at ten o'clock on ABC. Oh, and one more shout out for the uh, website. Yeah, living it the movie dot com. Living it without the G. The movie.com, longbeachdistribution.com, and legit skate co. Shandala, shandala, shandala! Love line. 1 800 L O V E 191. Love line. Love line. With Adam Cole and Dr. Drew. 105 Alternative from San Francisco. Well, what do you know 
know about that, everybody. Dr. Bruce, man has studied, studied the Bible extensively. Yes? Well, yeah, I went to Christian schools my whole life. Mm, it's good to know. Yeah. All right. Stephen Baldwin has uh, left the building. Him and uh, some uh, Mexican nuns are building a church in the desert. He'll be back upon completion. All right. Uh, let's get back to the phones now. I know you want to talk to uh, Casey, the dude over here. doesn't like to have sex with the condom on. But I'm going to talk to uh, Stormy oh. with the big boobs over here. You know why? Because I'm hetero. Stormy. Hello. What is happening? Well, I have large boobs. <laughs> yeah. What's, what size are you? I am a 34D. 34D. Almost a double D. Almost a double D. And, and here's the thing, uh, folks. I have to remind you, uh, listeners, that uh, you really want to focus on that first number not being so big. A lot of guys, oh, man, she's a 52D. Now, that, that mm. means she's got a back <laughs> like a junior college linebacker. Right. You understand? You want that low first number, and then you want the D. When we fall, 34D, very solid. How, uh, how tall are you? I am 5'4". Five 5'4", four. Five four, and... Uh, how much you weigh? About 115 pounds. 113. All right. So you're a petite woman. Yes. With a large rack. Yes. Very Excuse large. Me, Bruce, <laughs> I have to beat off. Leave it your sweat. Ha- it just kind of happened one day. Oh. Huh? <laughs> it just kind of happened one day. All right. And uh, you're 22. Mm-hmm. And you want to look. Uh, you want to look into a uh, reduction. Yes. I don't know necessarily if I want a full reduction. I heard there's something called a tuck, like where they pull all the skin up. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. are uh, I, why are, are you having back problems? I have back problems, and I'm mm-hmm. a little modest about them. Mm-hmm. Big areola? <laughs> no. No. Have Very you had little. kids? Just check. Yes, I have a four-year-old. Yeah, and a four-year-old. did you breastfeed for quite a while, or nine months? Okay. So right. you've had some drooping also after the oh, yeah. pregnancy. All right. Well, here's here's what you need to do. Yeah, uh, you need to consult a plastic surgeon. I mean, I've talked to uh or spoken to uh Dr. Marcel who is a resident plastic surgeon who really they really are the pimps of the doctor world. Oh, yeah. Year-round tan, pinky ring, open shirt. <laughs> Just got back from some uh, debaucherous uh, club med type vacation for swingers every time I speak to the guy pulls up in a Porsche box there. I mean, oh. it's it <laughs> Where is the Hippocratic Oath? Jesus Christ. My God. Hey, Hippocratic Oath, he balled it up and smoked it in Jamaica <laughs> last time he was there trying to swing with some couple. It sounds like nip and tuck. Are you kidding me? Jeez. And now here, here's... No, but he does a lot. He also does a lot of work with, uh, you know, people have uh, landmines gone off in their right. face and stuff. He'll give them a boob job. <laughs> <laughs> people that were horribly burned gives them a boob job. He gives everyone a boob job. You know, po- poor kids from, like, uh, former Soviet bloc countries with uh, cleft palates and hair lips. They come out with breasts. Boob job. Yeah. Even the guys. Boob job. That's all he knows. But he's, he point is he gives back to the community through boob jobs. So what Stormy needs to do is uh, take a... First, you got to take a picture. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, because uh, once they're gone, they're gone. And then the second thing you need to do is uh, go in and uh, consult a plastic surgeon. And okay. they'll just tell you what they can and can't do. There's not, according to Dr., uh, uh, what I call him, Dr. More Marcel, stuff. yeah. It's really more the, uh, it's more the bachelor from the flying nun than he is <laughs> an actual MD. But the point is, is you, Carlos, the uh, swarthy, uh, handsome uh, foreigner, remember him? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The point uh-huh. is, is you need to go in and just consult a few people. They'll tell you what to do. They don't really have a. Uh, I don't. They don't really have a lift so much as they just. T- they have oh yeah, they augmentation do. And well, reduction course, is one of the most common procedures they do these right. days. Believe I, it or I, not. I know, but I, I think there's a little bit of a fallacy that you can just go in there and get a lift. Oh no, there are women that that's all they have done, especially after childbearing and when the drooping occurs. So I, I, I talked to Marcel about this on uh, more than one occasion, and. Uh, I don't know. It, it it's not here's all I'm saying. It's not as easy as it is it's 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 not as 
subtle a procedure as oh, you may uh, think. Oh, right, right. They're maybe moving around some more tissue than you'd expect. Right. But the I, point I, is- think, I think people think you're going to go in, you're going to pinch the oh, skin no, at no, the no. top, you're going to pull the breast up, sew it up, and, that's, and you're done kind no. of thing. It's, it's a procedure. Uh, but anyway, go in and consult and take a picture, for Christ's sake. Casey. Yeah. You're uh, 18. Yeah. Your girlfriend doesn't like to have sex with a condom. Nope. She says it ruins the moment. How, how long have you been with her? Uh, two months. Uh, uh, can she get on the pill? I, she, she says she is, but she hasn't proved it to me yet. What, well, what is this is. Uh, lack of trust you guys have at the <laughs> two-month mark? Well, I don't know. I don't want to do it if she's not on the pills because, you know, it's really <laughs> not safe. Well, why would she lie about this? Why don't you trust her, I guess, is the question. Because I don't, I don't trust her at all. Like, I've heard that she's cheated on other boyfriends and stuff, so. Hmm. Okay, well, look, if you guys, it doesn't sound like you got much to build a relationship on here. No. And maybe I'll just break it off. It doesn't seem like you're wildly in love with her. You certainly don't trust her. Why don't yeah. you just uh, cut your losses and move on? Because she's hot. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, you're asking for trouble. That's that's not oh, going to end up in a good way. All right. Look, yeah. I'm done talking to Jack okay. Casey. But here, here's the thing. Good advice. Uh, you know, a lot of people are in these relationships with, I don't trust a person. I think they're lying. They're abusive. Look, if you don't have any kids, you're not married. There's no commitment. You're not, you know, your name's not both uh, down on uh, the deed of some condo or something. Just get out of there. Right. You're young. You move on. That's what you do. You but he's young enough to think, oh, she's yeah, hot. There are hot chicks around who will uh, pay attention to you. All right, and, and by the way, you're, you're going to have difficulty ever uh, ha- getting documentation that she's on the pill. Even if she says she's on the pill or buys the pill or shows you the expired packets, it doesn't mean she's on it. If you don't trust her, then you're not in great shape, so you've got to wear the condoms. Yeah. But, all right, don't he's get going to stop enjoying sex. That's when he'll quit. All right, let's talk to uh, Diana. Hi. Diana. You're, uh, you want sex all the time before you had a kid, and uh, now you want, you, uh, what? Now it does it just for your boyfriend. All right, you're not into sex anymore. Yeah. How long ago did you have the kid? 13 months. All right, uh, postpartum depression. What do you say, Bruce? Mm, well, postpartum depression is, are you, are you depressed? I mean, you're, this doesn't sound like depression right off the bat. It's very common after pregnancy and after having the child, the dynamics of the relationship change. There are many reasons that uh, it's common for the pattern of uh, having sex and the attraction is is much different. Are you think you're depressed, Diana? No. Okay. You got, uh, we got 10 seconds here. What's your hormonal changes? See the doctor uh, and also... Well, I'd see the doctor. See the doctor. Maybe he puts you on the pill or something like that, adjust the hormones. I don't know if she's still breastfeeding or not, but... All right. That might do something, too. Yes. All right. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Yo, is uh, your born again leader, Ace Rockola, over here? Oh. Yeah, I found the Bible. Uh, I want to thank Stephen Baldwin for uh, coming in here and uh, sharing the good news with us. <laughs> he can be found, uh, I imagine, him on uh, just you and him on a resort, and he's thumping that Bible for two weeks. Oh. As other celebrities are trying to get high and get laid. <laughs> He's yelling at him about Deuteronomy. All right. Stephen Baldwin, dear, dear friend, uh, in here tonight. want to thank him. Celebrity Mole, ABC, 10 o'clock Wednesday night. Dr. Bruce, fantabulous job. You coming in tomorrow night? Absolutely. God bless you, buddy. Amen. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Bruce saying, Shandala, 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 Mahalo. I'm going to pray for you too, Adam. Will you? I am, dude. Thanks. I am, because you're obviously such a retard. This has been Loveline.
The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.